everyone. Welcome to the online meeting with the SWPS University. My name is Dorota. I'm the admissions officer and I'm here today with uh, my colleague Sasha and Hello. our alumni Gazis. Hi. <laughs> who graduated from our English Studies undergraduate program. Um, on the other side is Ada, who is also our colleague, and uh, she will be answering your questions in the chat box. She's waving uh, her hand somewhere there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you can ask the questions right now, um, and Ada will uh, forward the ones that are most frequent to us, so we can answer it here live. Uh, but also we prepared some questions to Gazis and to us as well as the admissions office because we've got a lot of questions from you guys, the candidates. Um, so we will uh, tell you today about the admissions process, but also about our programs of study in English. We will also tell you about the services and support um, that we have for our international candidates at our university. And we understand that the time right now is very difficult for everyone, for you and for us, due to the pandemic. Um, and we know that some of you already picked the uh, studies of your dreams and are right now applying, but some of you are still uh, thinking and um, they are thinking about picking the right choice for them. Uh, and we are here today with Gazis to talk about his experience of living in Poland and study at SWPS University. Uh, Gazis, so first question for you. Uh, can you tell us why did you decide to apply for studies in Poland? And also, did you consider any other country? So, hello guys. Uh, my name is Gazis. I'm from Kazakhstan. Uh, I have been living in Poland since 2015. It's been five years. Uh, I came here as a student uh, for SWPS uh, University uh, for uh, English Studies program, undergraduate program. Uh, since then, uh, I graduated in 2018 and I'm here living and working in Poland. Uh, why I choose Poland, basically? There were a couple of reasons for that. First is range of uh, degrees programs uh, in English, which is offered by the university. So basically it was uh, quite uh, common, just uh, despite being not English speaking country, you could study in English, fully English programs. The second was of course, uh, affordable uh, costs, living costs and the educational costs. Compared to other European countries, uh, it was relatively low costs. Uh, which uh, helps you to uh, plan your budget and uh, to experience uh, your student life. Uh, another reason uh, was more about the uh, travel. Uh, as Poland is part of uh, European Union and Schengen area, you, right after you come back to Poland, you'll be able to travel to any other country without any visa. Uh, and the uh, it helps a lot to see not only Poland, uh, but also other European countries. And uh, of course, while planning these uh, studies, you will uh, think about the outcomes, which will lead to thinking about your careers. In this case, Poland was the best country uh, in terms of uh, planning your career and uh, work after your studies. The, the, these were the like uh, most four uh, major reasons uh, to study Poland and uh, I don't regret it. <laughs> That's great. But Gazis, I also wanted to uh, ask you, did you have anyone before your, your choice um, was made to apply to Polish University? Did you know anyone who was studying in Poland? Uh, and I yes. know the answer to this question actually <laughs> before, but can yes. you tell us some more about that? Uh, yes, before uh, that, uh, uh, before analyzing the universities and countries, there were uh, some of my friends who studied uh, in Poland, specifically at SWPS University. And uh, when I came in 2015, they graduated that year. Uh, <laughs> so, so basically, uh, they uh, uh, provided more information about the university, about the studies, about generally living in Poland. So I had uh, some idea before coming what to expect and uh, I, I, I received their support and help for that as well. Mm -hmm. 
we know that this is very important for the candidates, for the prospective students, to have someone who is actually their age, who is also, you know, uh, having some experiences with studying yes. abroad. So yes. this is why this meeting is today with you, because of course we can, um, me and Sasha, we can uh, process, we can tell what kind of programs we have, but probably your experience as a foreigner who was applying to Poland and finished the studies and also is working here right now, it's b very, very important for, the, for these candidates. Um, Sasha, I wanted to ask you uh, about the current situation because we've got a lot of questions from our uh, candidates mailing us and calling us um, how the situation with the COVID pandemic affected the university and can you tell us some more about the current situation? Sure, absolutely. Well, um, I would love to do so but before that I would like to mention that we are uh, working on the whole project uh, about our graduates, uh, which is uh, created in the cooperation with the um, National Agency of the Academic Exchange, and this is this is um, the way of our university to show the to show our uh, graduates, alumni, to to show their stories, and this is the main uh, the main point for us to to present those stories because. You know, you can you can hear a lot of different uh, things about the university, about programs that we offer and everything. But when, once you will see the real people who were studying at the university, explaining their uh, their story, this is something really really different. And this is something that we are trying to bring to to all of our viewers. And now back to the question. <laughs> so as of right now, um, as probably most of you know. Um, there are some, uh, let's call them complications uh, caused by the uh, coronavirus, but uh, we are trying to handle that and do it as as as, um, as professional, let's call it this way, as it's possible. So as of right now, uh, there was a decision which was made um, and the decision is about the start of the academic year. So the start of the academic year was um, was going to be at the beginning of October and right now it's being postponed until the middle of October. So before start of your classes, of course, you will get an information uh, regarding when exactly your classes will start, how they will look like, who you will be having them with and everything. But as of right now, we've made the decision that those those classes should uh, start a little bit later. And this is all due to the fact that the, um, the situation with coronavirus isn't, um, well, it's not really bad in Poland right now. Uh, there are a lot of different countries which are having better or worse experience with um, with the coronavirus but as of right now um, there are some complications our offices are closed we are still available uh, online or by phone so you can always call us or send us an email and we will be able to answer your questions however as of um, meeting uh, in person alive uh, it's not possible um, as of right now at our office um, we can meet each other on the on the online at such webinars uh, and this is the situation that we're having right now we are asking all of our candidates to uh, uh, not well not to send all, all the documents that they would like to because uh, there will be a problem uh, with handling them as um, as we are not at the office right now so if you are having any questions just scan those documents and send them to us but please don't send them uh, to our office uh, right now we will let you know when it will be the moment to do so yes and also a lot of our candidates they are uh, applying based on the scans of the documents and then they can bring the hard copies up on their arrival uh, to Poland. Um, Gazis, another question for you because I know that you had the experience to uh, also study in another country than Poland. You went uh, for some time to Turkey, right? Yes. Can you compare the experience between the two countries uh, and what are general um, benefits of studying abroad? Uh, yes, absolutely. When I came to Poland, I came as an international student uh, in 2015. And uh, in my first year, uh, I learned about Erasmus Plus program, uh, Erasmus program generally, uh, which uh, will give you a chance to spend your semester or one year 
uh, in another partner university. In this case, uh, I choose Turkey for my study destination and applied for this program. Uh, and uh, sta starting from 2017, so my second year, I spent one semester and then I prolonged, so I spent one year in Turkey uh, under this program of study. Uh, it was amazing experience uh, in terms of meeting new people, learning new culture, new language and uh, exploring new places. Uh, <clears throat> of course, uh, the education st studies, I, I cannot say studies were different because you, while uh, applying for this program, you will need to choose subjects that will be more or less related to your subjects uh, on that semester. So you, they have to be uh, more similar. Uh, and then I chose it and then I went to Turkey. So I spent one year there and it was amazing experience. Uh, uh, I ha the most important, the most amazing experience was when I started filming in Turkey. Uh, <laughs> uh, it, it was a, a, another story, but uh, generally I, I, I liked uh, being in Turkey, studying in Turkey. We went there with all uh, university, with all students from Europe. So I felt kind of European student studying and living in Turkey. <laughs> uh, also, a good part of this program is that you will receive some financial support uh, for that uh, and uh, you will get some discounts on your studies. So if you really want to uh, experience student life, I would definitely consider uh, spending at least one semester uh, in another country. Mm -hmm. uh, also, uh, I'm sure that we have uh, other programs apart from that, uh, because at the time my group mates, for example, went to South Korea and uh, some of them went to Canada, which I suppose were like partner universities. They also received financial support, but it was a totally different program. But uh, it also helped them to explore new cultures, new experience, because when I came back, we all were different in terms <laughs> of <laughs> our worldviews. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. I'd so, uh, as you said, our university is a part of the Erasmus Plus program, and we do have the partner universities with different uh, with different uh, universities in the world. So, um, the offer is different when it comes to different programs of study. So, for example, as someone uh, studying English studies with additional language of Chinese, they can go to China to learn Chinese in China. So, there are different programs, and we always encourage. Uh, students to join them and after uh, actually right now uh, the rules changed and you can apply for the Erasmus exchange program after the first semester of studies oh, so this I is see. another benefit and you can also apply during your master program so you can actually go twice if you want to for the Erasmus exchange and of course the tuition fee uh, that you pay is um, is lower but you pay the tuition fee of our university so um, often students are picking the European University, West, uh, Western European University, where uh, tuition fee is way higher and they wouldn't afford to go there. But the Erasmus Plus program gives them the opportunity. And as you said, the programs, the, the classes that you choose are very similar to the ones that you have on your program. So you can then continue your studies without any, you know, retakes, for example. Yes. Um, OK, so. Uh, no, Sorry, I have a question to you because, uh, well, our viewers uh, do not know about that, but the Rota is a part of the Erasmus uh, and international crew of our uh, university. So as a person who's involved in, in the academic exchange, do you have any information about the uh, exchange in the era of um, coronavirus? Are there any delays? Uh, is it still possible for students to, to apply for the exchange? Yeah, okay. So. Um most of the European universities, they um, they suggest to the candidates, the students, so they will move their mobility for the spring semester. However, we've got plenty of people who will be joining us from the winter semester. This is because the, we think that the borders within the European Union will be open very soon. So it shouldn't affect the Erasmus Exchange program. So fingers crossed, everything will be fine. 
Uh, but yes, uh, there are some students who are choosing to move the mobility for the spring semester. Great. And uh, what about what about the situation uh, with the uh, well, uh, there is the, this is really complicated situation uh, right now because you know everything's changing dynamically. So uh, as of right now in Poland, there is this um, uh, this the quarantine period, which is set to 14 days, which uh, people need to spend at, at their homes when they will start their studies. Uh, well, before they will start their studies, and this was the situation which was actual actually uh, while it's before before this week and uh, all of a sudden this week they've changed this so i'm encouraging all of our candidates all our uh, future candidates to check uh, the rules and the information which will be available at the ministry of foreign affairs here in poland um your mean well your embassy for example at in poland they will be posting the information regarding whether you need to spend that period uh, sitting somewhere here uh, in poland uh, waiting before you will be actually uh, available to leave your home or not and as of right now there is no need of uh, spending this quarantine period for students coming to Poland for studies. So as if you are a student, there is no need for you to, to spend the time uh, being at home. However, we encourage you to uh, stay at home as long as it will be possible until this thing will be over. And uh, for for all of those candidates who are actually worried about um, about the situation with their visas and the beginning of the academic year we have special solution for for all of you so basically if you will be having troubles with getting visa with obtaining visa before the beginning of your studies there will be a couple of different options available for different students for example for students of psychology there will be online studies which are which will be a a possibility for you to study even while waiting for the visa and as of um, other other faculties the situation may be different for example we have this uh, school of form faculty which is basically um, which is the program of which is based on the workshops so there is uh, there is not that many classes which you will be able to uh, to have online so depending on the program that you will be uh, that you will be studying you will be offered a solution we will be contacting you regarding your situation and we will be asking you to give us a feedback whether you will be able to come here for the beginning of the studies or not however we all think that this this thing will be over really soon as we would like to leave our homes as soon as it, it will be possible and get back to normal because you know sitting at home isn't isn't that fun right <laughs> yeah exactly and we strongly believe that we will meet you guys in october at our office at the university but as sasha said if you've got any troubles and you will be having any troubles to arrive to Poland, you just have to contact us and then we will give you advice what you can do to start your studies uh, without any disturbances. Okay, um, Gazis, come back to you. <laughs> because we, uh, we wanted to ask you a question. Um, I mentioned that you, are, you were studying English studies at our university. Can you tell us uh, why this was your choice? Why did you choose this program? Uh, well, uh, in 2015, I graduated from uh, college in my country uh, with specialization in translation studies. And uh, right after that, I wanted to study a similar course, in similar program in undergraduate degree. Uh, so English studies was the uh, perfect choice in, the, in, in that case uh, because of uh, its practical courses. Because before choosing the courses, I was able to see what kind of courses I'm going to take in three years and uh, to see the professors uh, and I checked them and they all uh, mostly were uh, well known and experts in their fields. Uh, also, the, uh, the spe special thing about this program is that English studies was divided into three parts. First is teaching English as a teaching. Uh, second uh, is trans uh, translation. The third is English in business and media. So my uh, area was English in business and media, where I also had the courses from uh, uh, management, uh, human resources, marketing, economics, business. Uh, so basically business oriented courses. It was uh, not just only about the English studies. 
in, in, in this case, uh, it was more important for me to learn some basics of other courses as well. And also enhance my English language level as well. Okay. <laughs> and um, uh, a follow-up question, actually. Um, can you tell us more about this practical approach at the English studies program? Uh, yes, uh, the, b basically our classes were divided into several parts, for example, lecture-based, discussion-based, workshop-based, and uh, this uh, helped us a lot because uh, in one semester you would take uh, in undergraduate degree uh, around uh, seven or eight courses, uh, which is still a lot, maybe it sounds uh, so small, but uh, in general, it was enough for us. So basically, two or three will be lecture, two or three will be more discussion uh, classes, and um, one more uh, uh, about workshops. Uh, there, you uh, uh, in discussion and uh, workshops, you'll be more involved, and uh, the number of students will be not large like in lectures. So it would help you to interact more with teachers and uh, as well as with other students. Uh, and uh, when it comes to courses, there were opportunity for us to learn different types of courses. And plus, uh, we had some online trainings as well at, at that time. So now ever around the world are students uh, studying online. So uh, it was not new for us at that time. So we already had some experience there and uh, learned uh, some courses online, uh, which uh, helped us uh, in terms of uh, in enriching our knowledge, mm -hmm. I'd say. Uh, in English studies also, what is good is that our professors were really experts. For example, uh, I had a teacher uh, from EK who graduated from uh, Nottingham University, Andrew Buchanan, if he knows, <laughs> and then yeah. Bilen, Bilen Takman, uh, who is from Canada, and uh, Pavel Perka, he's the, he was the head of our department, he's very uh, nice person, <laughs> I'd say, <laughs> uh, and uh, we had uh, uh, Emma Oki, uh, who was quite strict teacher, but also it was really uh, fun with her to study. Uh, and this kind of teachers made our our life at that uh, at that time. Of course, we thought that it's like they made us more difficult to live in <laughs> because of the classes and hard. But now I'm really thankful. And after graduation, I emailed to all of them, uh, thanking that uh, I had a really great time with them, basically. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if anyone all. wants to check the, the names that you mentioned during the webinar, um, there are lecturers uh, on our website to, to each of the program, so you can see actually who everyone is dealing with uh, and in which program they are experts. Um, and also we really care for our lecturers to be professionally active. And English studies is not only um, uh, not only one program that is very practical. And maybe Sasha, you could tell us some more about the other programs and the practical approach. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, first of all, we can talk, for example, about management program, which is absolutely practical program that we offer right now. Uh, this is something which is based uh, mostly on workshops and the working groups and those subjects created together. So um, basically, if if I if I've had to sum it up with one uh, sentence, it would be practical classes with people who can inspire you because the the program is basically. Um, uh, made of uh, different uh, different subjects, which will let you um, get in touch with uh, people from different cultures. As the management program is one of the most uh, one of, of those programs which are the most um, international at our university. So you will meet the people from different countries, uh, coming from all over the globe, and uh, you will be able to share your experience, your culture with them, and also get and um, also be inspired by 
right? They are culture, they are attempt to solving problems. And uh, this, this, this attempt is really important when we are talking about international business management, international cooperation, international business, something which includes that international part. And uh, this is something which is uh, really, uh, really strong part of the program. The other th strong part is, um, and the crucial part, I would say, of the program is um, the way how those classes are organized from time to time uh, during your classes you will be able to meet um, to meet people from the business actually so uh, those can be CEOs those can be heads of different departments at huge companies also you will be able to meet the young entrepreneurs uh, even uh, at, at almost the same age as you, who uh, are working on their startups, on their own businesses, uh, trying to to hustle and find the way to to really be there at the market, to to beat their um, opponents at the market and find their own their unique solution. And they will be visiting you uh, you during those classes. Uh, not all of those classes, but you will have those uh, so-called um, inspirational classes with them from time to time. And they will be coming to you and you will have this class which will be divided in two parts. The first part will be the presentation of such a person. So he or she will be describing uh, themselves and uh, trying to uh, to explain you what exactly are they doing and who are they and where do they work and at which company, what is that company and everything like that. And after that, you will have a Q&A session during which you will be able to ask questions, for example, regarding how to find a sponsor, where to find the money for your business, how to uh, hire uh, right people for the right business, how to find your your um, your people how to gather your crew uh, around your project and everything so this is this is really something that is really unique among all of the management programs at, um, at different universities in Poland as of right now and um, this is this is something which will give you a, a sense of the management and management in the uh, at the international market and um, this is the bachelor's degree and also we offer master's degree uh, also in management and uh, this this program has two paths to, to choose from the first one is uh, the path uh, for entrepreneurs so basically for those who are willing to have their own business to become a CEO uh, to have something that, that they will be working on for for ages and another path is for people who are willing to work at different co um, corporations uh, different huge uh, companies and we are not talking only about the management but also finance finances, economy, basically any company uh, and any size of the company. So this is this is something which is uh, which is really nice and something which is uh, really unique about the management program at our university. However, if you think that uh, English studies and management are only programs that we offer, then no, <laughs> we have a lot of different other programs to offer. For example, let's talk about psychology. Psychology is one of the, well, I would say not not the oldest, but the program which is offered for quite a long time at our university, and basically as WPS comes from the uh, uh, the University of uh, Social Psychology, this is something how it was called at the very beginning. But as of right now, this is the university. Uh, it, it, it's been a lot of time since that time. And uh, besides psychology, we are offering a lot of different uh, pro, uh, different other programs. However, the the quality and the attempt to um, to teaching uh, psychology is. Uh, is really really unique and this is really at the quite high level uh, in Poland and if you will be looking for uh, psychological programs uh, in Poland uh, at um, international rankings uh, you will see uh, three main universities there uh, two of them will be the public universities uh, which have more than 100 years of their story and uh, the third one will be our university which is quite young as it's it has slightly more than 20 years still uh, this is this is something that we're really passionate about something that that, that we can uh, that we can uh, say proudly that psychology 
is one of the strongest part, uh, parts of the university. It, it is included in other programs of studies. However, uh, psychology itself uh, is uh, offered as bachelor's and master's degree uh, available in Polish or English. Uh, and basically, if we are talking about bachelor's degree, you are getting a lot of different subjects combined all together. And this is uh, to give you an opportunity to choose something for you. And after that, once you will enroll for master's, you will be able to choose uh, between clinical psychology and applied social psychology. So this is also something that, that we're offering. Um, now, if you think that uh, we we have only, you know, quite, quite usual programs, then now, as I've mentioned before, we have School of Form, which is really, really something, th th something really different from other programs. This is really, uh, it's really creative. Once you will enter School of Form, you will feel that, feel that, that sense of, uh, of being an artist, being a designer, uh, being somebody who, or who is creating something for other people. And it also has psychology included to that in order to, to, to give you an understanding of uh, who exactly are you designing for, who will be a user of your product. And uh, this is this is made in order to not only give you a skill in design, but also give you a skill in thinking of people that will be using something that you are creating, giving you something really unique that will let you uh, uh, stand in front of other uh, other uh, graduates of other universities and say that that you have something that they don't have. So I I can I can tell you a lot of different things for hours, but maybe let's stay to our um, stay close to our timeline and uh, continue our questions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sasha. That was really a good description of all of the programs. I will only add one thing: we, except for the degree programs, we only offer language courses. So if you think that your English language or Polish language is not enough to start studies. Uh, you can join us for one year uh, prep course. Um, and then after this one year, you can improve your language and also think about the program that you would like to apply to. OK, guys, it's back to you. <laughs> uh, could you tell us some more about your experience in moving to Poland? I guess it was a huge process for you. This was the first time that you moved uh, abroad by yourself, right? Can you tell us how was this experience for you? Yes, uh, thank you for the question. I was only 18 when I moved to completely to a new country uh, that I haven't been. And uh, it was my first time also uh, being outside of my own country. Uh, and uh, as I said, in my my experience was, uh, I would say, very beneficial for me in my future. Uh, because when I, uh, before deciding to study uh, in other country, I overcome uh, my fears. Because I always thought how one person or a small person can come to another country and start studying uh, to a uh, strange uh, environment. But uh, I overcome my fears and gain some confidence uh, to come here and uh, I moved. So in 2015, I came in September. Uh, the process was quite easy uh, for up, uh, starting from application process. I started uh, around June. Uh, to send uh, the, to the university some documents, scans, and then uh, they asked some hard copies, and then uh, they sent me the invitation. Uh, by this by this invitation, I was able to apply for a visa, and uh, I received my visa in three days, and then, bang, I'm in Poland. <laughs> it was so, so easy time. But of course, uh, as I said, uh, b before coming, I started looking for someone uh, or some people from my own country, who are still who are living in Poland, who have some experience in Poland. So I started writing to them as well. Uh, so they were also really helpful. They helped. Me, they they started uh, basically. They, they they welcomed me at the airport and showed me city the first day, uh, and uh, we had a great time at the time. And then uh, I, I, after one week, I went to the university to pick up some to give some documents and then uh, start the, my education uh, in Poland. Uh, moving in, in, to Poland, uh, as I said, is not that it wasn't that difficult, but it's still challenging. Uh, 
so for future newcomers, I would say uh, gain some confidence and uh, be prepared. Analyze, analyze the city, people, and uh, I'm sure you will not regret uh, to come to Poland. Thank you. And of yes. course, if someone is moving and have got any questions regarding the whole process, mm -hmm. um, they can contact us, the admissions office. Maybe we will manage to find some students who would like to show the city um, and answer some questions about the living in Poland. But Gazi, one more question to you regarding the process of moving, because uh, as you said at the beginning, Poland is no, uh, it's not an English speaking country. I mean, mm -hmm. this is not the official language. A lot mm -hmm. of people do speak English, but it's not an official language. Um, and uh, the candidates are sometimes nervous that they don't speak Polish. So mm -hmm. would you say that they need to learn before moving to Poland? Or should they ever learn Polish language while studying here? What do you think? Okay. Uh, I uh, of course, it depends on personal uh, experience, uh, but uh, I also came without speaking any Polish and I still cannot properly speak Polish. Uh, my level is A2 level. Uh, but uh, before coming, uh, I uh, when searching the, uh, how to say, when analyzing, reading this uh, uh, articles, I found that uh, English proficiency index Apparently, uh, there is some kind of index, and uh, in this index, Poland is located in top 15, so 11th place. Oh. Yeah, uh, right after Germany. So, uh, I, I, it was uh, when I came here, uh, there were uh, my older generation uh, who were over 60, I would say. Of course, they were not able properly communicate, but still they could understand me. And uh, when I got lost, for example, in the city or when I asked some basic stuff, they could explain to me. Uh, but generally, younger generation who are like me, uh, they, they spoke with me in English uh, without any uh, problem. So, uh, of course, as I said, it depends on your personal uh, condition. If you really want to uh, interact with people and uh, make your life more easier, <laughs> I'd say <laughs> learn Polish. It will be really helpful, of course. But if you uh, cannot speak Polish and uh, if you don't have time for that, it's okay as well because people uh, Poland, uh, Polish people in Poland speak Polish, and uh, Warsaw is more international environment. So you 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 see uh, all the people from around the world uh, who can speak and communicate properly in English. So yeah, I I, I can say uh, I cannot say that uh, not knowing Polish should be barrier to come to Poland. It's not. So okay, okay, thank my you. My answer here is that. Your answer is great. <laughs> this is something that I yeah. wanted to hear, actually. <laughs> no, but really, if, if you will take a look at something, at, at the, the stuff which is happening uh, outside, there is a lot of different uh, mobile applications which will let you to handle most of the things which you need for your everyday life. And those applications are available, usually they are available in English and in German and sometimes there are additional languages like Russian, English and, and, and stuff. And besides that, um, if you will be in the city center, as Warsaw is the capital, once you will be in the city center, Almost every coffee shop, every shop, every um, every business which is related to uh, customers and uh, customer services, well, they will have at least one person who will be uh, speaking English. And we are talking about everything, food, uh, electronics, barbers, anything. Basically, once you will enter and you will start talking English, if the person won't be uh, uh, won't be understanding you, they will they will do something like this. Uh, and they will call somebody who's, who's speaking yeah. English <laughs> and you will yeah. handle whatever you need to handle that. So it's not a problem at all. And considering the the digitalizations of right now that, that almost every uh, business has uh, either their website or their application, basically most of your needs you will be able to fulfill without any contact uh, with with the staff of, of the uh, either uh, shop or the um, any any service that you will need. Yeah, and I would say that Sasha, we both have 
the similar experience uh, traveling around the world, yeah. meeting you guys on the uh, international affairs. And sometimes we are in places where no one can speak English language. Definitely they cannot speak Polish language, let's say, for example, in China. And there is always a way to communicate, um, especially when you've got your phone, right? Yes, yeah. <laughs> uh, Sasha, can you tell us some more about the uh, accommodation options? Because someone is, you know, buying the ticket, they've got a plane ticket, they have to arrive to Poland, and what should they do? Where should they live? Well, uh, sure, absolutely. Uh, when you reply, when you are planning to buy a uh, to book a, a flight ticket, I would recommend you to stop right there and think of your visa. If you don't have one, there is no no way that you will be able to use that ticket. Um, before that, you will need to apply for visa. And in order to apply for visa, you will need a couple of things. Uh, the uh, first one and the main one will be accommodation. So basically, you need a place to live at, right? And uh, we, as the private university, we do not have any um, any accommodation options that we will be a uh, an owners of. So we don't have any uh, flats that belong to the university. However, However, we have a partner company which helps our students with that. So uh, they they have this uh, website where you uh, are able to see all of the offers available at, at that point of time. You will be able to find something which will be um, uh, the most suitable for you. Uh, there are uh, different dormitories, uh, private flats, rooms at different students' flats. So you will have a, a wide range of options to choose from. And um, every option will be described with uh, the uh, exact location where it is located at. So basically there will be a map with the information where it is located and you will be able to find uh, find out how long you will need to take, uh, for example, that bus or how long it will take to you uh, to get from there to the university by walk. Uh, well, I don't recommend you to to walk uh, to the university as it's quite a a long distance to, to be walking. But, you know, if you like something like this, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> at all. Uh, but still, uh, you will be able to uh, check different options and to find something that will be uh, suitable for you. There will be even a price filter where you will be able to uh, choose, for example, if you have a budget, if you're traveling here on a budget, that's that's not a problem. There will be a slightly cheaper options. Well, they are not as good as those uh, pricier ones, but at the beginning it will be more than enough for you as you will be spending a lot of time outside that flat or that uh, dormitory, uh, sitting, hopefully sitting at, at the university uh, having your classes or uh, eventually hanging, uh, hanging out with your friends somewhere at, at the city. So uh, this is basically something that, that, that you don't need to be that worried about at the beginning. And uh, you can start with the dormitory. After that, you will get in touch with people from your group, from the dormitory. You will be able to, you will be able to uh, cooperate and, for example, rent, uh, rent a flat. For, let's say you have two mates, so you will be able to rent it for three of you. It will be slightly um, less expensive and also it will be even better for you as you will have a uh, really limited scope of people who will be uh, contacting you every every day from, from, from morning to, uh, to the late evening. And uh, this is something which which is available for I guess two years now and this is the third year if I'm if I'm not mistaken this is something which uh, works quite okay at least we haven't had any uh, issues with this uh, partner company so uh, you can rely on them and uh, basically uh, in order to um, book a flat for you or that um, the dormitory place you need to have the acceptance letter. So you need to finish the uh, admissions process, um, make the payments, get the acceptance letter from us, and after that you can book a place there. Even if you, let's say, uh, will be booking that uh, room or that flat next week, it's, it's June, right? Your classes will start in October, right now it's June. Uh, there is no need to be worried about because they will send you a uh, an agreement which you will need to sign and after that scan and send to them. And uh, this agreement will be uh, basically confirmation that once you will come to Poland, that flat or that uh, dormitory will be waiting for you. They won't give this place to anybody else. There is no need to be worried about coming somewhere where you won't have a, a roof above your head, right? So. 
that, don't worry about that. But um, as I've mentioned, you need to have that accommodation. You need to make the tuition fee payment. Basically, this is something that also embassies are uh, asking for in order to, to get the visa. And also you need to have the acceptance letter, which will be a statement that you've finished the admissions process um, and you are able to start your studies. Once you will have all of those things, you can start thinking of your visa. And once you will get your visa, you can book that ticket for, for the flight. Yeah, definitely. So what we uh, suggest to you and what we also encourage is to do everything step by step. So first you have to focus on the admission process, then you can continue. Once you finish the admission process, you can continue with your accommodation, your visa and moving to Poland. Um, Agassiz, I also wanted to ask you about your experience uh, after the first year of studies, because uh, we know that many of our students, they are choosing to apply for visa uh, once they are arriving for the first time in Poland, because it's easier, the, the place is always uh, checked by our university, so they're sure that this dormitory actually exists. Mm -hmm. And then after the first year of studies, they are usually searching for apartments. Uh, how was this process for you? Uh, yes, thank you for the question. Uh, the process uh, is more uh, easier than you would think, uh, because uh, in Poland you have so many options. Uh, as we said, like living in dormitory or living, sharing the apartment or just living the whole, uh, sharing the whole apartment basically uh, when I came here I started living uh, uh, in uh, dormitory uh, the dormitory was fixed term contract so you will make an agreement with the dormitory that you will live for some period of time and then you will be able to move to another place uh, when moving to another place uh, at the time we uh, international office sent us some links uh, helpful links uh, for searching the uh, dorm uh, apartments basically and uh, it was quite easier with those uh, because you can just click on it and then choose the places, uh, areas, I mean in Warsaw. And uh, uh, if you really uh, want to plan your budget, then you can even choose the how, how, for how much you can afford, basically. And then uh, you'll be able to contact with each owner or or some there are service services that companies provide for that they will find for you and uh, then if you like it then you just rent for the for some period of time of course the periods can be different uh, uh, as a student uh, you will most likely get nine months period fixed term contract or 12 months and then after that you'll be able to prolong it if you like or just end with that uh, contract terms. Uh, also, I would like to mention that Warsaw is not that huge, despite of being capital, and uh, is well connected. Uh, for example, if you live in another part of Warsaw, it's easier uh, to use. We have metro, uh, we have trains, we have buses, uh, we have taxis, <laughs> uh, <laughs> if you want, of course. Uh, but basically, the, the city is well connected, so you will not uh, spend much time on roads uh, like other countries. Uh, mostly, uh, it will take around one hour, the maximum, if you are living from other side. But uh, generally, students tend to live around the university or in the city center, where it's quite uh, easier to access uh, to the university, basically. I yes. confirm. I remember yes. that the first time I went to Istanbul, someone was asking me to which part of the city I've got the airport, because from one airport on the European side to the yes. other airport on the Asian side is six hours. Yes. In one <laughs> city. So for someone <laughs> like me from Poland, yeah. where in Warsaw yeah. you can take like one hour and you went from the one side to the other yes. side of the city. That <laughs> yes. was something unimaginable. Like if you take six hour journey from Warsaw, you can go to Poland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can you can reach you can other go countries. To Ukraine, too. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yes. So uh, that was really funny for me. Uh, Gazis, I wanted to ask you, the, it's not something that we've got in our scenario, but I know that this is something that really is interesting for the huh? prospective students. What about the free time in Warsaw? Uh, 
specifically in Warsaw, Warsaw is the capital city, so you will not get bored here because there's so many, so much fun is going on. Uh, of course, before pandemic, uh, we have uh, <laughs> uh, we have museums, we have parks, we have zoos, uh, we have uh, different student unions at the university. We have to mention that. And uh, uh, there are some cultural events, uh, cinemas. Uh, cinemas, by the way, not uh, not all of them in Polish. So uh, there are availability in English as well. So you can just watch the movies in original uh, language. Uh, and the uh, shopping centers. So if you would like to shopping, basically, uh, I never get bored in Warsaw. And uh, also, uh, there are uh, starting from March till the end of, let's say, October or November, there will be availability to use the bicycles, city bicycles, uh, and the sco uh, scooters. Uh, now I see available, so you can use them and uh, explore the city. Uh, by yourself or by your with your friends, which will be amazing experience. Of course, of course, studying in uh, abroad is not only about studying. Uh, it also should be more or less interacting with other people because you will learn uh, more uh, about other countries, other nationalities, and other cultures. Also, you will spend more time uh, uh, properly. I would say uh, with uh, your group mates, so you will remember something in the future. <laughs> <laughs> Not only yes. the studying. Yes. Actually, Sasha, I can ask you kind of the same question, because you also were an international student living in Warsaw. Here and, we go. <laughs> um, yeah, here we go. I'm sure that you've got amazing uh, stories to tell about the student life, but also, can you tell us some more about the work during the studies? Because um, I'm not sure if everyone knows that if you are um, applying for studies in Poland and you're a student and you're on a student visa, you can also work. And I know that you had this experience, so maybe you can tell us some more about that. Sure. Well, um, once you become a student of the Polish university, you have a right to join the labor market. So this is something which you have as a student. There is no need of obtaining any additional documents which will let you to, to get that, right? So this is something which is like the bonus to your, to your studies. Um, Usually people ask me, well, where is when is that that right time to start to start working in, in Poland, uh, especially during the studies? And the answer is, it is basically up to you. So I was, um, well, um, I feel that I, I need to explain you my story because it's slightly different than than Gazi's had. Uh, I I uh, came to Poland for my master's studies and I was studying only for two years, so it was slightly a shorter period of time uh, during which I was studying. Um, and I, I've studied my work uh, during the uh, first year of studies, so this was something that I wasn't. Well, I wasn't really planning to do that, but this was something that that was like the occasion that I've I've decided to use, and um, this was a, uh, a an offer that I've got just really suddenly. Um, I was uh, given an interview to one of the um, one of the television companies. Uh, they came to Poland from Ukraine. They were asking for for the feedback of uh, students studying uh, in Poland. I was just you know explaining them. Uh, what is uh, how is it to, to be a student in Poland? Uh, what are the benefits? Where exactly you can work and everything? And all of a sudden after that, I've I've got a call. Uh, they've offered me a uh, work in Poland. I was like, well, okay, maybe it's it's the right time to to start when because. Almost all of the greatest uh, things uh, that that uh, that had happened in, in my life were really spontaneous. So this was one of them. I was I've decided okay, if all of those were nice, then this one also will be. And this this is how it all has started. So basically, there is now a right time for for the beginning of the uh, working experience uh, work experience in Poland. Uh, but usually, I suggest if you're uh, let's say 18 years old, you are 19 years old. Uh, um, it is already legal for you to, to get that work. However, you need to have uh, some skills for that exact uh, job, right? So if you don't have any skills, then come down. There is no need of asking the huge amount of money to be paid for your work. And uh, some students think that it's um, the right way of starting your career is by working at different coffee places, shops, and something like that. Well, as for me, every job is okay unless 
uh, it's not okay for you, right? So if you don't feel okay, if you don't feel good with the with the, something that you are doing, well, probably you need to change either your attempt to that or the job that you are doing, right? So uh, if if you feel that this thing is for you, if you feel confident with that, then then go ahead. This this is something that that, that is okay for you, and you can start with that. However, if you are not sure if if there is a problem with with understanding uh, of how you can fulfill that 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 uh, that place at the uh, company, then you can take. Um, uh, the um, how do you call them? They, there are special uh, three-month uh, opportunities for people who are planning to start their careers at different companies, uh, and basically those huge companies are looking for for the fresh graduates, for students who are finishing their uh, degree to mm-hmm. join them. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> they are called internships, <laughs> and uh, basically. Uh, you can try yourself at different size of companies. You can uh, you can start from the small business and after that uh, upgrade to the to the huge one and uh, see if that's if that's for you or not. Uh, me personally, I prefer working in uh, uh, close uh, groups of people. So basically, if the company has more than 100 workers, uh, this this is not not that comfortable for me. However, it's handleable. Uh, still, you know there are there are things that you prefer more or less. So if you're a student and you, let's say, are a student of the second year of studies, you are not planning to go somewhere abroad for the uh, exchange program, maybe there is a uh, time that you can spend at, at, at work. So you can just visit the careers office, talk to them regarding uh, your um, your need of finding some kind of a job for you. And I'm sure they will be able to help you. From what I know, they will even uh, be able to organize like workshop for you and another uh, students uh, where during which they will um, they will check your um, um, well what 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 is um, what are your uh, great uh, great things uh, about you and what are not that great things and basically they will help you to use them during uh, writing your um, portfolio uh, your CV right uh, during the admissions uh, not the admissions the, um, the the process of getting the job right so. You can you can uh, talk to them. Uh, there are other options if you will be in touch with other students from higher years. Uh, they also will be uh, somebody who will be able to help you with that. So they may be working at the company, and uh, basically they will know that uh, well this company is looking for somebody for somebody who's who's really ambitious, for somebody who who has uh, uh, their ambitions that they would like to to just simply to put somewhere <laughs> and make something good. Uh, maybe maybe this will be for you and just just try to find something that is that is okay for you. If if you've tried and that wasn't really pleasant experience, just ignore that. Try to find something else. You need to be constantly searching until you will find something that 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 will be uh, really interesting and amazing for you. And don't be afraid if you, for example, are graduating from, uh, let's say, a management uh, program and uh, they are offering you a place at the marketing department. It doesn't mean that that you are a bad manager. It means that, well, you are good enough to join whole another field and be, uh, be quite ambitious there and show you ambitious there. So here exactly. you go. <laughs> exactly. Uh, um, before I will uh, ask you, Gazis, I just wanted to make a quick disclaimer because I know that our website is down, but our IT guys are working on that. So if anyone has got the trouble uh, to to access the website, it should be up shortly. Okay, Gazis. Okay. Okay. Yeah. To- uh, also, I want to just add something that uh, the location of our university, so Warsaw City, is a uh, hub for many international companies. Uh, after your first year, uh, now it's the time, for example, uh, there are summer internships in most of the companies and they will start uh, receiving uh, applicants from all over the universities in Poland. So generally, mostly of course in Warsaw, in, uh, Warsaw City universities. So you will be able uh, to spend your whole summer in international organization learning about uh, the company and the, the jobs that uh, usually uh, are done there, basically. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's all. And you don't, 
And you do not have to speak Polish to find a place for you, right? Ah, no, 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 absolutely no. Of course, international companies speaking language is English, so the, the basically English is required, and the other languages, of course, are options. If the, they, if your uh, work is connected with some specific countries, of course, it's nice to have other languages, but generally English is enough for most of the works here mm -hmm. in Poland. Uh, Gazi, so I wanted to ask you about your experience because you finished the studies and you are working right now in Poland. Can you tell us some more about your job here? Ah, yes, absolutely. Uh, after uh, graduation uh, from Polish University, for Polish Higher University, you have a chance uh, to stay and search job for one year. Uh, which is called Carta Absolventa. You will apply for that if you need. And then uh, you have one year period to search a job or start job. Uh, basically, this is how it happened that I graduated from uh, university and uh, before before graduation i already was a employed so the, the, the before graduation i was uh, hired by uh, accenture operations so it's one of the biggest names in management consulting uh, i i worked there over uh, most uh, one year and uh, now currently i'm working in investment banking uh, at bnp paribas uh, uh, which is one of the largest and the uh, investment banks in the world Basically, of course, uh, education uh, really helps uh, in terms of it because uh, funny thing is that uh, most uh, psychology graduates uh, from SWPS University become HR, and uh, whenever you go, to whenever any company you go there here, you will at least meet one of them and uh, have some conversation about our university uh, or about some professors that we may have ha or had, you know. Uh, and uh, b basically it helps us to, uh, university is also, as I would say, networking. So basically your CV says SWPS and her or sh uh, their uh, says SWPS, it will really helps to have at least one friendly face during the interview and it helps you to get employees. <laughs> yes. So I think I would answer to your question if you have any other. I have, uh, well, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I, I have something that I would like to, to add to that. Uh, basically, if we are talking about international students studying at WPS University, uh, you will meet our graduates almost everywhere, especially at the places like airport, like uh, different services related to international uh, students, uh, people coming from abroad to start their work in Poland, uh, different organizations related to psychology, to management, to international business cooperation. And basically, from what I've heard... Um, organizations as well. Yeah, exactly. Mm. And uh, from from what I've heard from our graduates, because I was um, I was at the first earlier this year, I was talking to uh, another our graduate, and she was uh, telling me that basically wherever you go, you will uh, and, and when you will meet somebody who's not from Poland but he's in Poland or she's in Poland and working at a huge company, they will be either graduates of SWPS University or they will be somebody who's planning to join. So basically, this is this is really really fun thing about the um, SWPS University is that um, the university gathers those people together, gives an opportunity to cooperate and after that there is this uh, community which is maybe you well, um, different universities has uh, have different communities uh, for example on Facebook or any other social media platform. Yeah, and uh, maybe as WPS University international students community is not that huge. However, uh, there is this community which is not visible at the at the first sight, and all of a sudden you will explore that once you will finish the university, and you will see those uh, that that support from people uh, just because you finished the same university. This is this is really something unique and fun. Yeah, yes, exactly. I would agree and like that. we have to remember that right now. The university uh, has got campuses in five cities in Poland. So all around Poland, in Warsaw, Sopot, Poznań, Wrocław and Katowice. And we've got tw uh, almost 17,000 active students in all of the cities. So it's really hard to not meet someone who is exactly. either graduated from the university or studying at the university uh, we also, you know, we've got a language school, we've got postgraduate studies, we've got PhD programs. So 
I would say the community is huge. And of course, we've got uh, a part of this community are international students. We've got many international students who are not studying in English, but in Polish language, uh, like from Ukraine or Belarus, right? So the community is huge. And this shows that we not only have professionally active lecturers, but we've got professionally active students, graduates, and it's really great to hear that, you know, entering the labor market is so easy, as for Gazis it was, right? Yes, yes. Even, okay. even you know what, the, the, also another great part of it is, uh, let's let's talk about School of Form. Um, even if you're a graduate of School of Form, it doesn't mean that this is, this is the end of your journey, thank you, goodbye. It means that you will stay in touch with all of your lecturers because you know the uh, the connection between lecturers and students is really close, and even uh, when students finish their programs, they are still uh, <coughs> sorry uh, they are still in touch with their uh, professors, with their teachers. They are creating projects together. Sometimes teachers will uh, let students um, to join their companies, uh, their design studios. This is this is something that that is really unique. Uh, you can always count on people that you will have in classes with and both students and teachers and uh, this connection also stays the same for, for other faculties, not only the School of Form. Once you will enter the university even five or ten years after your graduation, probably after your graduation, probably you will meet, uh, for example, Pavel Pirka or uh, another another teacher that you were having classes with and they will go you know instantly smiling uh, telling you stories about how you were studying and yes. different various things during that since that time you know so this is this is really something something really really unique and something really nice about being a student uh, in Poland in general and also at the WBS university that's okay. true okay um <laughs> Got a questions from uh, one question from a chat box, uh, and the question is about the language um, admissions interview, uh, and what it consists of, and how many admission interviews are there in total. Well, uh, I'm not sure about the question about how many admissions interviews are in total. I will say them. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean for one candidate is one. Yeah. <laughs> But in total, well, we've got plenty of interviews, even I it's would say, like ten, I say, yeah, both for in studies in English and studies in uh, Polish language. Sasha, can you tell us what is the interview? How long does it take? Because we Absolutely. know that we've got a lot of candidates who are really nervous about this interview and uh, it's nothing, uh, nothing scary, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, it depends on which program you will choose, but it's, it's not scary at all. Uh, basically, if we are talking about the most of, of, uh, of the programs that we are offering, the interview is uh, basically the Skype interview, which uh, takes from 15 to 20 minutes, not longer than that, during which you will uh, meet the lecturer from our university. Uh, and um, well, basically that lecturer will talk to you regarding your everyday life, uh, your uh, points of interest, your motivation, you know, the everyday stuff and also uh, reasons for you to come to Poland to, to choose uh, this exact program. And this is the conversation during which your level of uh, English or uh, Polish language proficiency will be verified. After that, uh, during the next couple of uh, business days, you will get an answer whether you've passed that or not. And uh, the interview, uh, the well, the whole step with the interview will be available for you. Once you will create an account at that missions portal, you will provide all your uh, personal information. You will download the required documents, sign them, scan them, upload to the website. And once we will verify them, you will uh, get a um, confirmation that they are fine and now you can take that interview if that will be required because sometimes if for example you have international certificate uh, let's let, let it be TOEFL and this is the certificate which is confirming the B2 level of English proficiency and you're applying for studies in English uh, well there is no need f uh, then then there is no need for you to pass this interview as uh, B2 level is the main language requirement at, at most of our uh, bachelor's degree programs. Uh, however, if you don't have such a certificate, in most cases you can pass a Skype interview. If not, for example, if you're applying for English studies or English studies with the additional language, in that case you need to either have the um, 
um, international certificate, the full list you will be able to find at the admissions portal at our website, or you will need to pass the test. And this test is about uh, one hour and 45 minutes long, and during which you will have different tasks to, to solve and uh, to show the, the actual level of uh, English proficiency that you have. If we're talking about master's degree, uh, the main requirement for English studies is not B2, but C1 level. So this is something that you need to keep in mind. However, there are other programs of studies where uh, there are uh, other uh, levels uh, required. So it's uh, better to just start with the application, fill everything out, and after that, uh, during the, that process, you uh, will see the helpful information at the admissions portal, uh, using which you will be able to clarify for yourself whether uh, you fulfill those requirements or not. Even if you will pass the interview and there will be a, well, let's say the the room to uh, to uh, improve the level of uh, language proficiency, our lecturer will give you recommendations whether, let's say, summer school, uh, which is a uh, two-month uh, course in case of English language will improve the uh, level of English proficiency. Usually this is something that we offer our students and this is something that, that usually works for most of the candidates. So basically if you have let's say B1 level and B2 is required you can apply for the summer course, summer school and uh, along uh, with that application you can continue with the application for studies. This is how you will get uh, admitted to the language course and also studies. So this is this is basically the main thing about the interview. So uh, back to the question, uh, how many of them? A lot of them. There are different slots which are available to choose from. But if we are talking about the one single candidate, you will have only one interview which you will be able to, or, or exam which you will be able to book for yourself. Even if you've booked one, you will be able to change the date. But this is, you know, this is something that you will explore at the admissions portal. Okay, um, we had a question about the limit of places, and I know that Ada is right, uh, answering right now this question, but um, I think this is uh, connected to another question that we often hear, which is, what is the, 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 the deadline of the application? And um, to be honest, there is no official deadline because we uh, recruit until we reach the limit of places. So even though for English studies, we usually open two groups, so it's around 50 people, uh, you have to bear in mind that uh, it's also connected to how popular the program is. So for example, for master in psychology on the clinical um, psychology specialization, we will be slowly uh, closing the, the groups. So um, remember that for master studies, you often have to sit for the exam. So if you have to do it, you have to apply as soon as possible. The sooner, the better. Okay, guys, I don't think that we've got uh, any more uh, questions. So, uh, Gazis, I wanted to ask you whether you've got any advice for the prospective students. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> advice for stu for future students, mm -hmm. I'd say research the university and the study programs uh, that you really want to study. Uh, then uh, talk to the university. Uh, they are very friendly. They will email you. They will. Uh, the communication we have to say is. say that right now because we are here. <laughs> yeah, the, the communication is well established actually, and uh, so you will get easily the answers to your questions. Uh, then uh, I'd say be organized and uh, meet the deadlines, as Dorota said. Uh, so please keep in mind those. And uh, I hope that uh, studying at SWPS University will pay back to you tremendously in the future, as I'm receiving right now, <laughs> basically. That's great to hear, Gazi. That's, Thank you so much. Uh, uh, w w one more thing that uh, when my f uh, when I started st uh, studying at SWPS University, I also brought some of my friends back to Poland and uh, they also applied to the SWPS University. And uh, so my suggestion is that when I recommend, I don't recommend really bad things, you know, they, they, they are very uh, in a good quality. So the, the, the three of my friends studying or already graduated from SLPS University after me and uh, they're all happy and uh, they, they still thank me for uh, introducing them to the university and showing around the city. 
Gazis is our great ambassador, I must say. <laughs> also, Gazis was helping with the admission pro process to your friend last year, right now? Yes, for, yes. For, for master studies. For master yeah, studies. English yes. studies, as I remember. Yes. So, you know, um, Gazis is the extension of the, our admissions office. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you so much for uh, joining us today. It was really a pleasure uh, to have uh, that great graduate who can um, show us your pers perspective. Uh, and I think that it's really beneficial to the prospective students to hear, you know, experiences of someone who um, went through the same journey that they are starting right now. Um, Sasha, have you got anything additional to say? Because I think um, we will uh, we'll be uh, coming to an end of today's meeting. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one one last thing that I would like to share is uh, please, for God's sake, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay at home stay for home. a while. <laughs> And um, everything will be fine uh, in the closest future. But for now, stay at home. If not, then put that mask on you just to just to stay healthy. And uh, basically, we will be we will be really really glad to meet you in person at uh, WPS University once it will be possible. Um, we uh, well, at least I hope we will continue traveling uh, around the world to meet our. Uh, potential candidates and our new future students. So if you are not applying this year, but for example next year or in a couple of years, we also will be glad uh, to meet you um, during one of those trips. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them. You can send them to our email or just call us and ask those questions. And uh, well, I really, really hope to see all of you really, really soon. Me too. Thank you so much for today. Thank you guys. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you guys. Bye. Bye.